right, so we're continuing on with pedigrees today. Yesterday I did a couple um, practice problems for you. Today I'm going to do some more practice problems, and then you guys are going to do the second assignment that's in there, and you'll turn that in. Now, if you're in class, you're going to be given a paper copy of that assignment. If you're at home, you don't need to go and print anything out. You can just get a piece of notebook paper, or you can even try doing a Google Doc. I think there's a couple drawings in there, so it would be easier for you if you could just write it out and then take a picture and submit it that way. If you run into issues, please email me and we'll see what we can do to work through it. So we're studying the pedigree and answering the following questions below. How many generations are shown on the pedigree? So they didn't label anything for us. But we know it starts at the top here. Here's one, two, so there's three generations. Which parent in the first generation has sickle cell anemia? Okay, so now we know what disorder we're talking about at least. Um, the dad. The dad does, or we could number him as individual number one. How many children were born in the second generation? So we're looking here, their kids, one, two, they had three kids that were born. This person here married into the family. How many children in generation two are carriers for sickle cell anemia? So here's generation two. Now they were nice and they labeled the carriers for us instead of us having to figure it out. And the half-shaded people are carriers, so how many children? Just one of them are. How many children in the third generation have sickle cell anemia? Just one, this one right here, he's in the third generation. And how many are carriers? Now since they labeled the carriers for us, we don't have to assume if people are or are not. So there are no carriers is what we're gonna go with here. If they hadn't labeled it, then we would have to try to figure that out. Is sickle cell anemia a sex-linked trait? How do you know? So we need to look and see men versus women here. So we have two boys who are, and the girl is a carrier. So if it is sex-linked, that means that the dad gave her the affected trait, mother saved the boys here in giving them good traits. Now normally if you're looking for sex linked or not sex linked, if the majority of the boys have it, then we would say that it is sex linked. And if the girls, most of them are carriers, that is also a clue that it is sex linked. Based off of just the information that we have here, we could say yes, it is sex linked, but that question's a little fishy. So let's hold off a second there. Let's go on to number seven. Is the gene for sickle cell anemia likely to be dominant or recessive? It is recessive. We know it's recessive because we have carriers. Below is part of the pedigree of Queen Victoria of England. This pedigree represents the occurrence of hemophilia in her family. Only one part of her family members has been included. Refer to this pedigree to answer the following questions. How many grandchildren, how many male grandchildren were hemophiliacs? So it has up here labeled, so here's Queen Victoria. These are gonna be all the grandkids. We're gonna include great grandkids in that as well. So there were four of them. How many, oh, okay, so we're gonna go with grandchildren and great grandchildren if I would have read the next question. So only one of them, that one right there. How many of the great grandchildren were hemophiliacs? Three. How many were girls? None of them were girls. All of them were boys. 
Is it more likely for males or females to get hemophilia? Males. Explain your answer. This trait is going to have to be sex linked. So I'm just going to put that it's X linked. Which, if we go back up and look at our other question about sickle cell being sex linked, we're going to go with a yes here as well. How do you know it affects males? And the females are the carriers. Why were all the carriers in Queen's, Queen Victoria's family female? Um, they were carriers because they received two copies of the X. So they received two X chromosomes. They received one that was perfectly fine, and the other one was affected, which made them carriers. How are pedigrees helpful in determining family traits? You can trace diseases. There's a couple multiple choice questions. Hemophilia is a sex-linked disease. If the spouses, X, represented in this pedigree, have a male child, what is the probability that he will be affected with the disease? So we're over here. So we're talking about a male child. So it's not going to have anything to do with the dad. He's going to give him the Y. So even though the dad is affected, that's okay. For looking at the mother here, there is a 50-50 shot that she's going to give her son that affected X. How many affected individuals are shown in this pedigree? Just one. Which is most commonly used to study chromosomes? Study chromosomes. Most of the time you're going to use a karyotype. You're going to talk about that in biology. It's just a picture of your chromosomes, and you can go through and you can pick out certain genes on those chromosomes and determine if it is um, a faulty gene or not. Which condition is least likely to be passed on genetically? We know sickle cell anemia can be pa passed on genetically. Heart disease, you can be predisposed for heart disease. Cancer can sometimes be passed on genetically. It depends on the type. This question is kind of funky. Um, autism is not actually a genetic condition. That has to do more with when the baby is forming in the womb. It's an imbalance hormonally on the mother's end, but it's not anything that she wouldn't know to look out for or that she could avoid. It just, it happens. So I'm going to go with A because it's not a genetic disorder. Hemophilia is a result of blood not clotting properly. This condition is caused by a recessive allele carried on the X chromosome. If a mother carries the hemophilia gene on one of her X chromosomes and she has children with a man who exhibits hemophilia, which the following may result. So she's heterozygous, dad has it. All the daughters will have hemophilia? No. All the sons will carry hemophilia? No, because the mom could potentially, it's 50-50 shot. All the daughters will carry or exhibit it. C is the correct answer there. So all the daughters are going to have it because dad, or be carriers, dad is going to give them his faulty X and mom is either going to give them the good one or the bad one. So they're either going to get it or they're going to be carriers for it. So C is the right answer there. Albinism results in the body being unable to make a protein needed for production of melanin, which gives up our skin, hair, and eye pigment. According to this pedigree, what kind of trait is albinism? So it doesn't skip any generations, so it's probably not a recessive trait. Operon is a type of um, 
gene. So we're not going to go to that. Put out a dominant and sex linked. Sex link traits tend to affect males more than females. And since we have three females that have it and only one male, it's probably not sex linked. So I'm going to go with dominant on this one. Now, a dominant mother can have a child who is not affected by it because she could be heterozygous. Likewise, they could also have a child who does have it, even though the father doesn't. So this boy here is heterozygous for it, but he's going to exhibit it because it's a dominant trait. Hopefully I'm not confusing you guys too much with this stuff. Based on this pedigree, how would you describe the mother labeled X? Affected, living, carrier, or normal? She is a carrier because she is halfway shaded in. I'm gonna go back up one second here because you're probably thinking living, how do you know if somebody is living or dead? And right here, you might have thought that this is the person that I should have been looking at because it says the spouse is represented with an X. This person, because they're X'd out, they actually died. So that's a dead person. You just put a little X over them and that's it. Down syndrome is caused by the presence of an extra copy of chromosome 21. How would a karyotype identify a person with Down syndrome? So ID physical characteristics of someone with the disease. I have chemical abnormalities in the blood. Carrier types are pictures of chromosomes. So it has nothing to do with your blood. I do the parents as being carriers. And that's not something that the parents are gonna pass on. You're not a carrier for it. It's just a um, miscommunication within the genes whenever they are being passed on. It'll be able to ID the presence of an extra chromosome on number 20. The pedigree shows the inheritance of free earlobes and attached earlobes in five generations of a family. Attached earlobes are caused by a recessive allele. So this is going to be an autosomal disorder. It's recessive, meaning that it can affect both males and females, but you have to have two traits in order to get it, two recessive genes to get it. It is individual two. Individual two. So they just went straight through and Instead of doing generations, they just labeled everybody. Homozygous or heterozygous for free earlobes. Individual two. So free earlobes are going to be dominant. So knowing that they have a child who has attached earlobes, they are going to be heterozygous. We know they're heterozygous because they have a child with attached earlobes. And I always call these children affected. They have an affected child. How many children of individuals four and five have attached earlobes? So here's four and five. They had three children. None of them. None of them are. Can you be certain of the genotype in individuals five in figure 14-2? Can it be certain of the genotype? So we're looking at this male up here. We know that he has at least one dominant trait. I'm going to give him a capital R here. And we know that the mother here is going to be recessive. So that means that all of these kids here are all heterozygous. So they are all capital and lowercase, six, seven, and eight. Now, if we look at the grandkids here, eight and nine, we can tell that they are affected. They all have attached earlobes, which means that this person, the wife, was also heterozygous because that's how the kids would have gotten the attached earlobes, but the parents don't exhibit the trait. But as far as this guy goes up here, we don't know for certain what he was. There was a 50-50 shot of him passing on a capital letter. There was a 50-50 shot of him passing on a recessive letter. So I can't tell you definitely what he is. He could have had 20 kids, and none of them could have had affected earlobes, and he could be heterozygous. It, the um, 
probability that it starts over each time you have a child. So no, he could be heterozygous. or homozygous dominant. There's just not enough information. Predict the genotype and phenotype of individual 14. There's 14 now. Oh, this little kid down here. Little boy. He has two affected parents. Now, affected parents are going to be recessive. So, there isn't any other option than to be recessive. He's going to have attached earlobes, which is fine. Are any of the descendants of individuals one and two homozygous for free earlobes. Descendants of individuals one and two, so we're talking about these people here, three and four. Well, four has attached earlobes, so three is the only one who could potentially not, and unfortunately, no. They cannot be homozygous because the dad has affected earlobes, so he had to give that boy the faulty X, but the mother came in and she gave him the dominant trait. Okay. This is what a karyotype looks like. It's just a picture of your genes. Which chromosomes are autosomes? You have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 of them are autosomes, and the last pair is your sex chromosomes. So which chromosomes are autosomes? It's going to be numbers 1 through 22. In the human karyotype, how many chromosomes are shown? You should have 46 chromosomes that are shown. Does the karyotype show the normal number of sex chromosomes? Oh. So you should have 46. Each one should have a pair. Now looking at 23 here, we have two big ones and a small one. So this person actually has 47 chromosomes. This pair right here is going to be the sex chromosome. So that's pair number 23. And they went in and labeled them for you. The two big ones are the X's. X's are always really long chromosomes. And the tiny little one is the Y. So I don't want you to think that there's six different chromosomes there. There's only three. They just labeled the X's and the Y's for you. Does the carrier type show the normal number of sex chromosomes? No. There are three instead of two. Is this carrier type for a male or female? Well, they have two X's, but they also have a Y. And if you have a Y, you are a guy. Complete the Punnett square and then answer the questions. It's a weird Punnett square, isn't it? What does sex linked mean? It means the trait is on the sex chromosome. gene is located on the Y chromosome, could the trait ever be expressed in a female? No, because females don't have Ys. There are some traits that are on the Y chromosome, for example, male pattern baldness. They call it male pattern baldness because it's on that Y chromosome. And actually hairy ears is also a trait that's on the Y chromosome, so you really won't find a girl with hairy ears. Out of four children, how many are expected to be female? So look at this, two of them, and two would be expected to be a male. Which sex chromosomes do both males and females have? X. And which one do only the males have? Males would be the Y. Alrighty here, so if we go over to your worksheet for today, It looks like this. It says pedigree charts worksheet. 
And again, you'll just get a regular piece of paper out. It goes over some general information, how shaded people are going to be carriers. So first, wants you to tell how is the couple married. If they're married, it says write a whole sentence. You don't have to write out a full sentence. And then draw an example. They have a horizontal line. So I have a male and a female that is their maid. How can you tell if the couple who is married had children? A vertical line. So here is my little family. That means they had kids. Draw a pedigree that represents Mary married to Greg with two sons, Scott Tyler, and a daughter, Karen. Please label the name. We're not worrying so much about if people are affected or not. We are just trying to draw them. Okay. So here's Mary. Here's Greg. Karen is the daughter, Tyler, Scott. And then you'll continue on like that. So you're drawing that pedigree again, but now you're adding to it. You're labeling the names. Eventually, it's going to start asking you um, Questions like this, identify it as autosomal, X-linked, recessive, and dominant, explain your answer. Remember, if it skips generations, it's probably a recessive pedigree. If it's only affecting the males, it's going to be sex-linked. If it affects both males and females, then it's autosomal. If you see something like this, looks like cherries, that actually represents twins. So they were born at the same time. So you don't have to draw anything for this, you're just labeling what they are. Same thing here, just label what it is. And the last one. You're going to be labeling, making the pedigrees and labeling them. Now it says, to make a pedigree chart from the descriptions given and tell whether it is autosomal or X-linked and whether it is dominant or recessive. Also state which type of muscular dystrophy the pedigree could be based off the list your teacher has given you. Label the pedigree with the names of the individuals. I'll put the types of muscular dystrophy, dystrophy in your canvas and I'll tell you if they're X-linked or autosomal, dominant or recessive, and that will help you to figure out which type is which. So the last ones are going to be drawing for them. Alrighty, guys. Well, I'll do one example for you. Chad and Veronica got married and had Brittany, Kristen, and Harry. It was discovered that Harry had muscular dystrophy. So here's Chad and Veronica. They got married. They had Brittany, Kristen. And Harry. It was discovered that Harry had it. So he's going to be shaded in. Brittany married Larry. And had Stephen and Stephanie. Stephen and Stephanie. Stephen also had muscular dystrophy. Larry's brother, Barry, also had muscular dystrophy. But neither of the parents did. So this particular disorder then is going to be 
it looks like it's extinct. And it would have to be a recessive trait, right? And then the board keeps jumping around. Wow. Wow. Again, with the spelling R E C S. Good thing I'm not an English teacher. Recessive. And again, I'll put the different types of muscular dystrophy for you in the campus. And then you guys, I think there's two more that you have to do. You have to do B and C. And that's it as far as the drawings are concerned. All right, you guys. I'll get back with you soon.